three, two, one. Here we go! Welcome to the Remote Photography Podcast. In this episode, I speak with Donna Rianne Lloyd about her remote photography experiences. Enjoy the podcast. Hi Donna, thanks for doing the podcast. If people don't know who you are, can you introduce yourself? Hi, um, I'm Donna. People may know me under my model name, Rihanna Gray, but I'm mostly known as Donna these days. Sure. Uh, I've been modelling now for about seven, eight years. How times have changed, obviously I'm still loving it, despite things mm-hmm. taking a completely different turn. It's uh, definitely allowing me to become a lot more creative. Yeah, just done a lot of travelling. Uh, I've travelled Uh, mostly to Canada. I've travelled all around the UK, Uh, done loads of workshops and tours, and uh, that's pretty much me all over, really. So how long have you been doing remote photography? Were you, like, there at the beginning, or was you one of the few that came in late, like, beginning of, say, this year? Uh, I pretty much jumped on the remote bandwagon probably around about, I think, about March, Mm -hmm. April time. Um, and I was introduced to it by a friend of mine, Colin Grist, who owns Pathway Studios in Chester. And when he was telling me about this, I thought that that sounds virtually impossible. How does this work? Because you're in that room on your own. Mm-hmm. So you're responsible, obviously, for moving the lights and around. And it was just, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm that much of a technophobe, but it's just the idea initially of remote shoots just completely freaked me out. And so I undenied over it for a while. And then I thought one day, I thought, you know what, let's just give this a go. Let's just see what all this is about. Because I started to see a few models sort of participating mm-hmm. and, you know, getting some feedback from them, asking them how it went and, you know, how does it work for them? Is, is it stressful? Um, do they get any positive feedback from it? You know, is there any technical glitches? You know, all these questions yeah. that uh, make you um, decide whether or not it's something you want to proceed with. Was it like the technical aspect that you was worrying you or it was just like, oh, I've got a camera, let's try this. But until like you were told about it, it wasn't something you were looking into? Um, it, it wasn't something I was looking into, no, not until I was told about it. Mm-hmm. I'd say for me, it was more the technical side of it that just, I would say, kind of, you know, just spooked me a little mm-hmm. bit because I thought, how is this possible? I mean, can you really, it was just that realisation that you could actually control, have your camera controlled by anyone in the world just through remote having someone remote control your computer mm-hmm. so i mean I, I did test it out with um, my friend colin um, who i mentioned before I, we did test it out together and it took a while obviously it, you know it took a while for me to get used to it and and just when i saw the the, the arrow moving around on the screen and then controlling the camera at first i just thought this is just absolutely crazy you know <laughs> and i thought this really could work mm. so I started to feel my confidence build up. It was reassuring when we spent a couple of hours just yeah. going through that. Obviously, then we shot together. So you you were the second um, photographer oh, okay. that I had the opportunity to work with remotely. Yeah. And I think when you and me worked together, I think because you've done it before, yeah. and obviously because you're really patient, it just <laughs> it um, it just helped. You know, it mm. was a calm atmosphere. Yeah. There was no pressure. And I started to, I think it's when I shot with you that things started to click. Okay. And then when I was faced with some of the technical difficulties, you know, because like I say, you, you had quite a calm ac- approach to it. Yeah. It just it just helped me maintain that mm. relaxed frame of mind where I could just calmly look at the situation and figure out how to resolve it. And obviously I've been faced with more technical difficulties since, mm. but it's nothing that's too difficult to fix now. Yeah, it's just one of those things that comes with remote shooting that the internet's going to play up, the software's yeah. going to play yeah. up. So, yeah, like I say, even when we did our shoot, we literally had some technical difficulties to try we to did, do the shoot. Yeah. We had to split it across two days. But like you said, yeah. it was like, it's it was a bit of like a learning experience for you. So, exactly yeah. so that you knew what and I've to, always been the same you know it, even when I was doing one-to-one shoots if for some reason there was a transport issue and I got in late I would always give my time yeah the fact that this is a completely different ball game but remotely I will always give my time so despite the technical issues mm. if it took up half an hour to an hour of our time trying to figure out what what the hell was going on yeah. I was happy to you know give you that mm. time I promise like the next day yeah and again, it was just those challenges. It was like I, I went to sleep that night and I just thought, no, I need to, you know, I need to carry on with this because yeah. I don't, because obviously you're a very good photographer as well and you know your way around, I'm guessing, 
uh, most uh, camera models, I just thought, mm. I just don't feel like we've got enough in the bag yeah. that you would normally would do in a couple of hours. Mm. And I thought, I'm not going to let a few technical issues kind of get in the way of that. Yeah, you're not going to trip over just, the, the first hurdle, as it were. So. No way. So I, I was like, no, we're going to do this tomorrow. I'll, I'll give you a call back and sure. we'll, we'll get a couple more sets in mm. the bag. And we did. So at the moment, what uh, camera system and computers are you using and software? Uh, at the moment, um, I'm using uh, an app called Digicam Control. Um, I did have a look around um, some other programs as well, but on reading up the reviews, I just found there were more technical issues. And I think with Capture One, that was probably second best to Digicam Control. Yeah. Um, but Capture One, you have to obviously you have to then pay for your membership after I think it's like a one month free trial mm -hmm. or something like that. I can't remember. But I just decided to stick to Digi Digicam Control, so I, I use that for the remote. Connection. I tend to flip between Team Viewer and only just well started using Zoom. But it just depends on my internet connection on the day and perhaps the person's internet connection on their end. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it can be just a little bit too much for a computer to take if you've got a video call, you know, from yeah. one side of the computer and then the remote controlling, you know, the camera as well. So sometimes I'll just stick to Team Viewer for the remote part of it and then just do the video call if they want to be face to face as well. Mm -hmm. Um, to check on any delays between what they're seeing on Live Viewer. I'll just kind of do the video calls on a phone or an iPad. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that just keeps it a little bit more simple. So I use that. The camera that it's connected to is a Nikon D7200. Mm -hmm. And I have three soft boxes. So you say you shoot with a Nikon. Did you have issues like finding the right software to work with your camera at first? I found downloading the software for Nikon much easier to find okay. and download than I did with Canon. Because I actually own a Canon, but I found it quite difficult to find one that was compatible with the Canon. And and in the end, I just ended up sticking with Nikon. It just okay. made sense just to have an easier mm -hmm. an easier life. So out of the time you've been doing remote photography, have you kept count of how many shoots you've done and who you've shot with? Um, it used to be where when I was doing one-to-one -one shoots, I'd keep count roughly mm. of how many shoots I'd have a month. But with this, it's a little bit different because mm. I'm kind of juggling uh, two different jobs at the moment. So okay. life's just become a little bit hectic mm -hmm. <laughs> despite the pandemic. And so I, I just, I, I don't really count them at the moment. I just, I'm just quite happy to see the diary fill out and just know that I've got a, a few creative months ahead. Yeah. Um, and that's enough to keep me sane. So I don't really, uh, I don't, so long as I know that I've got some shoots in the bag, I don't really, I don't really tend to count them anymore. <laughs> and um, where, 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 whereabouts have you gone virtually? Is there Gosh, some kind of I've been in Canada, around the UK, mm. Greece. I'm trying to think. Where else? Um, America. Yeah. So you, you've been to a lot of countries, but without the jet lag. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least you don't wake up with jet lag the next yeah. morning. So that's that's the benefit of it. So No, but it's just, it's just good conversing with people from different walks of life, really. Yeah. People that you probably wouldn't even ever have the chance to because, I don't know, you just don't, you don't tend to travel as much as you would doing remote shoots but mm. well, that, that's what i found so, that i found um well maybe photographers i don't know if it's what like models they'll work with people they might not have crossed paths with in real life or in in, in person shooting so it's definitely opened yeah. up like getting that first shoot out of the way so when you do get back to in person shooting and say you go to that photographer's country or they come to the uk you might end yeah. up working with them in person uh, yeah, well, this is what I've uh, discussed with a couple of photographers I've worked with already, um, particularly two that work uh, that live in the US. And they've said to me, well, you know, when everything's back to normal, if you ever travel over this way, I definitely want to work with you face to face. So I think, you know, this opens up a whole new world of uh, creative doors for loads of models that never thought about going to, you know, the locations where they where they live. So, you know, it's, it's definitely good for, um, you know, putting your castings out, mm -hmm. uh, getting more bookings around those people that you've all, already worked with remotely. And no doubt for, for most that decide to travel to those locations, they'll soon fill up their, their tour there in no time at all so it's definitely helped with that and do you see like a remote shooting and being around so when you are touring it's going to be something you're going to continue to offer uh, definitely yeah yeah i'm starting to see some models cast for that already mm -hmm. um when things go back to normal particularly throughout the summer they're booking like hotel rooms yeah. and various areas and they're actually advertising tours as well as one one-to-one -one shoots so i think this covid is going to be around for a while i don't think it's ever going to go away and because of that i think a lot of people are still going to feel unsafe it's still going to have people feeling yeah. really insecure for quite a long while and those are the people that are probably 
more than happy to continue uh, shooting remotely. You've been shooting for a while now. Who are some of the photographers you've shot with? Oh, gosh, I've shot with so many. Um, I have photographers that I shoot with regularly. You tend to find that. Sometimes you get the odd one that comes in. Uh, Maybe you don't shoot with them for a while or maybe you never shoot with them again. But there's quite a few that I've shot with quite regularly. Uh, Keith Myers is is one. Photographers that I have worked with in person that I've worked with on a few occasions remotely now are um, Alan Bruce, who's based around the Midlands. And um, we've worked together on and off uh, for several years now. We've done a few remote shoots together. I've also um, had the pleasure of working with Monica, who's uh, a photographer in Canada. Um, I worked with her once in person in Canada and we shot together a few times remotely too and also Brian Copeland um, I've uh, shot with him several times on my many trips to Canada and um, I've also shot with him uh, a few times in person as well yeah so there, there are a few there are a few that I've mm-hmm. um, kept in touch with regularly and we're always kind of bouncing ideas off each mm-hmm. other and you know working together I'd say probably every every month couple mm-hmm. of months so has it been regular people you, you you shot with in person or have they become regular people now you've shot with remotely one is a photographer I have shot with in person uh, in Canada. Mm-hmm. The others, uh, yes, Alan is one I've worked with several times before because uh, he's based around the Midlands. So whenever I'm around the Midlands or he comes up to, well, the Wrexham area, when I was living in the Wrexham area, we'd shoot there or in Manchester. So we've shot together 19 times, but Keith, I'd say, is the only one that I haven't really shot with uh, in person. Uh, one of the ones I've shot, that I've shot with regularly, remotely. Mm-hmm. He's the only one that I haven't really had any one-to-one shoots with but hopefully when things are safe um yeah. you know i'd like to go out there because he lives he, he's actually based in new jersey oh, so okay. yeah maybe one day maybe one <laughs> day yeah. yeah so so when you started did you find out it was a lot of photographers in the uk started remote shooting with you or was it more people in europe or in other countries at first it was a balance of both it was mm-hmm. you know sometimes i would get some photographers obviously in the uk that want to shoot remotely and then I started getting photographers interested from the US and now it seems to be that photographers in the UK, uh, remote shoots in the UK have died down a little bit, Mm -hmm. but those in the US are quite happy to continue. And that's where I think it's going to go. I think for me, that says it all that I think where the market lays for remote shoots is those that are quite a long distance apart. Yeah. So those in the UK, I I think as their confidence um, increases and they feel safer to go out. You know, people are going to start shooting again in mm-hmm. studios and, and um, you know, on location. So I think where remote shoots might be safe in the UK is where, you know, say like a model advertises uh, this really cool uh, place that she's booked, say, in Scotland. And someone in London can't, you know, would love to absolutely do a shoot with this model in this really cool sort of venue in Scotland. You know, they can't get there. That's when they're more likely to book it book a remote but otherwise i would say it's for people that just are not able to travel from the other side of the world that you know want to stay connected and work with different faces all over Mm -hmm. so i think that's where that's where it's going to pretty much stay alive is those working together from long distances so is there people's work you've seen who shoot remotely is there any people you'd like to work with that you haven't yet um, yeah, there's, um, well, obviously Keith, as I mentioned, I'd like to work with him. Gosh, there's one, uh, I can't think where he's based now. Scott Devine. I think he's like Los Angeles way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he's definitely one that I would absolutely love to work with. Mm. I mean, his work's outstanding. So, so Scott's yeah. listened into this. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> well, he got good things to say about Scott. Yeah. I think his work's outstanding. You need to go and check his page out if you get a chance. But, um, yeah, he's definitely one. Yeah, I'd say I'm not picking any favourites here, I'm not, mm-hmm. you know, but uh, dev- I think definitely those two. I think I'll just list those two for now because I can't mm-hmm. think from the top of my head <laughs> which. Uh, so it's the same when you get interviewed, you can't remember you can't remember people's names. Uh, yeah, it's just mm-hmm. there's so many different names on the list. I mean, yeah. I'm normally good with names, but there's that many that I think this is why I don't count because I kind of lost count now. <laughs> <laughs> In between everything else, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's many, there's many that I would actually like to yeah. work with in in real life. I was going to ask you a question that um, do you find remote shooting limiting? But you have a unique way of doing your sets, don't you? Because you build sets and change them, and then you've got access to pets as well. Am, am I right in thinking that? Uh, yeah, um, they're actually. Uh, I mean, they're not really my pets. They belong to my partner, but yeah. he's got uh, a couple of snakes. 
uh, got a couple of, well, about three different lizards. Yeah. So I'll just, I'll tend to offer those as well. You know, if people want a, a different twist on, on their shoots, then I offer those. Yeah. I definitely uh, remember well. when you um, said, oh, I've got a python. Do you want to shoot a python? It's like, yeah, uh, Jesse. okay, that, <laughs> that was never on my um, bucket list to shoot, but yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, this is it. I thought, well, it's it's only something I've done sort of in a studio twice before, like yeah. over the years. Uh, and I thought, well, why not bring something different in remotely? I thought, you know, it's just a, a prop that probably not many people have. And I thought it might just spice things up a little bit. So needless to say, there have been about three photographers who've gone a little pale when I have brought one on set. <laughs> It's like they almost don't believe me. It's like, oh, no, no, I can bring... Do you want me to, do you want me to bring a python in for this one? They go, oh, yeah, right, OK. <laughs> they look at me like I'm mad. <laughs> well, I, I think I, I, I did had to do a double take when you showed me the python. It was like, yeah. oh, OK, you're going to do a picture with that. OK. <laughs> it's, just, it's, yeah. it's just funny. When I see them go yeah. a bit pale as well yeah. and they look a bit spooked by them, I just like to rub it in and say, oh, you're squeezing a little <laughs> bit too tight here. I hope you don't get as fix <laughs> Yeah, hopefully I'm not that photographer. He doesn't smother you to death. (laughs) Because there's nothing that no one can do, is there, when... uh... Yeah. You know, when you're you're just on two different sides of the screen, it's... If anything went wrong... Mm. But, yeah, you change your sets up every now and again, don't you, to keep it different? Yeah, I do, yeah. Um, I always believe in just keeping it fresh because, you know, I'm, I'm all up for the same sort of backgrounds. You know, your basics, your blacks, yeah, yeah. your whites, some natural light, you know, by the window. And that's pretty much how it all started off. So I kept it really basic. And then once I got more confident with the technical side of it and, you know, manoeuvring everything around, I just thought, I'm, I just want to go all out. Yeah. And then you start thinking more creatively than what you ever did before. And for me, I think when you're able to juggle not just, um, you know, styling your outfits as like we've all done for, Mm -hmm. you know, hope whenever we all started shooting you know we all start creating our outfits and you know giving photographers ideas and studios of you know different various creative ideas you know maybe some lighting techniques that you may have picked up somewhere and I think once you're able to start building your own sets I think that's when you've reached the absolute pinnacle of your modeling career yeah. is when you know you're able to do everything and provide a photographer with that for me i think that's a that's a challenge and um so an absolute achievement yeah because I'm, I'm looking at the, some of the stuff you've done he's like you've done one lights and silhouettes or something light props and silhouettes uh yeah that's coming up this weekend oh, okay uh and i've done at the moment i've got a moroccan set mm-hmm. uh, which i finished off uh earlier this week uh and one for queen of Ser- uh, queen of serpents as well so i'm guessing there's pythons and snakes in there yeah, there'll be another python yeah. in that one as well. <laughs> some some aren't too keen on that idea, so I mm. said, well, it doesn't have to really be Queen of Serpents. We could just do, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm all up for some uh, cheesy cliche shoots as well and just maybe vamp it up a bit, like Tank Girl or something like that, because because it's got a bit of a camo background mm-hmm. in there. I thought, well, we can just do something with a denim, a double denim, let's yeah. just break the rules, because no one really likes double denim, but I think it would work. Anything goes in photography anyway. So I thought with that background, it would look quite cool. Yeah, but you've also <laughs> gone like you've shot against the wall because you've got the light, so you you can have shadows and stuff on the wall. So you can either go from like keeping it simple to like, like you've done or build sets that have themes and have animals yeah, in just, as well. Yeah, you can go whichever way. You know, it can be really simple. I mean, there was one I did a couple of weeks ago and it was just a case of sit by the chair, uh, sit on the chair mm-hmm. by the window uh, with some fabric just to diffuse the light and keep mm-hmm. it all soft. And those setups are really, really simple. And then all you're left to do is just manoeuvre the camera because you're not using the lighting, you're yeah. using natural light. So I've gone from sort of simple sets like that to just going all out with really sort of technical sets and you know, having to change the light around to yeah. get different effects. And, yeah, every, every every day is different. Every every single shoot can be different. Exactly, yeah. Mm. And did you find, um, because you're having to move the camera and lights all yourself, Did was that, like, a challenge at the beginning? Or did you go, no, I'm going to go all in and do this and relish it and do the best I can? <sighs> John, you should have seen me at the start. When I first started doing this, I... I was literally, when I started moving the lights around and all the cables were getting mm-hmm. tangled up and things were becoming unplugged, one light stand would fall down. I just felt like I wanted to tear my hair out. And I thought, I can't do this. Yeah. I cannot do it. And then I started to think, you know, just it needs to be a bit more organised, you yeah. know, with the cables, yeah. figure out where to start off. 
maybe try and encourage a photographer, you know, if they want to do two sets, well, how about we start off on this one and move our way around so it makes it easier for me to manoeuvre everything. Sometimes you end up moving back and forth, but between one side of the room and the other and things can get a little bit twisted up, but that's that's fine. I mean, I've now got a structure set up where that doesn't happen so much, so. What's your average shoots? Is it like... Have you ever done one hour ones or is it like two the minimum, four is the maximum? What do, you, what do you find is the best one that works for yourself? I normally say that two minimum, two hours mm-hmm. minimum, um, because I don't feel that you can get a lot done yeah. in an hour. You know, even in a studio, you can't really get that much done in an hour, yeah. let alone a remote shoot, because you have to allow a bit more time for, you know, changing and as well as changing the lights around. It's not just the model getting ready. It's actually the model having to shift the lighting and maneuver the camera around. So they've got to bear that in mind as well. So normally in an hour, you probably get about two sets, yeah. two decent sets done. Mm-hmm. So that's why I try and say, you know, if you can if you can do two hours, great, because then at least you, you know, you've got a few decent sets in the bag. Yeah. You'll have about three or three or four. Mm-hmm. It's just down to what they want. That's not to say that, you know, I wouldn't take on one hour shoot to have. Sure, yeah. But I think it depends how much they want out of it. If they're happy with just one or two sets, mm-hmm. they say, well, that's fine. Let's just do an hour. Yeah. But they, if they're expecting as much as what they would normally do in a studio or on location, then I'll try and advise to take two. So with your remotes, is it more that your remote shoots are based around themes or it, does a photographer come to you with like a mood board and say, can we shoot something like this? Uh, sometimes my sets are based on various themes. I'm mm-hmm. trying to work my way through other inspirations to give myself some ideas for theme setups. So I always offer those, but I always make sure that I'm opening studio weekenders to photographers who have their own ideas. Because mm-hmm. I believe, you know, it's a collaboration at the end of the day. Exactly. And I don't want to be aware this is all I've got to offer. You either book or you don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not like that. It's You know, I'm always open to photographers um, coming up with their own concepts and Mm -hmm. I'll tell them what I've got. Always more than happy to build sets based on their ideas. If they let me know in advance, I can just build it up. Not a problem. So when you've been offering remotes, where have you found that you've got more people contacting you? Is it through, the say, the Facebook groups or is it through model sites or your Instagram or your social media? It tends to be mostly through... Uh, Facebook mm-hmm. and Instagram. Uh, not so much Purple Port, but I think when you're casting out for remote shoots on Purple Port, that makes it a little bit more difficult because you have to actually state your location. Yeah. Well, the location's at home. So it, yeah. th- there's nothing being set up in the last year on Purple Port that, um, you know, you can um, set this casting um, as a remote shoot so that it can go out to the majority of people, you know, all over the UK. Mm-hmm. But then a lot of people might argue, well, they feel like they're being um, spammed a lot yeah. because that would just be sitting in everyone's inbox when it's mm. not, you know, when, when they don't want they don't want umpteen messages from uh, models casting out for remote shoots sat in their inbox. So, so I can understand why they haven't. Mm. I mean, I'm not saying I don't use it to cast out, but yeah. for me, I'd say it's it's social media. It's Facebook and Instagram that gets most of the bookings in. So have you, have you found that the Facebook groups based around remote have helped you focus your selling point? Well, I was going to come to that because mm-hmm. I think since um, they were set up, and there's, there's three at the moment that mm-hmm. I know of. I don't know if you know of any more. but Yeah, um, I, th- I think there's three or four. I can't remember off the top of my head at the minute. Yeah, yeah one is Tethered Together mm-hmm. and the other two are two remote global uh, I think Facebook so, yeah. groups. Yeah. I tend to post in all of those and most of the bookings now just tend to come through those group shoots mm-hmm. because it's, it's keeping that separation between... Yeah. Photographers who aren't interested in remotes whatsoever, which is absolutely fine. It's not for everybody. But it just means that those photographers don't feel like they're being bombarded, you know, with hearing about remote shoots all the time. And it just Mm. keeps that same community in one place. So when someone's approaching you to book a shoot, how should they go about it? Is it like, because I think you said through the social media and maybe the, the Facebook groups, but can people go to your website and approach you through that way? Or have you found the traffic's more, like you say, from the social media side? Uh, yeah, I find most of the traffic's from the social media side. Most people will, you know, I'll just communicate with them on Facebook Messenger or via Instagram. But sometimes I'll just say, look, you know, here's my number, uh, we'll do a call because it's so much easier just to talk it through. Mm. I mean, that's always been the way anyway. But sometimes you just get more ideas on the table by actually communicating over the phone. But then I understand not everybody has that 
that time on their hands, you know, if they're still having to go out and work. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm happy to sort of, you know, messaging back and forth and sending mood boards. But most of the time I find that you get a more clear idea of what you want to achieve from the shoot when um, it's done over telephone conversations. So that tends to, the way I tend to communicate mostly. And um, have you found, that, um, say, photographers, because obviously with different time zones and stuff, have you had to do, like, say, you could do some in the morning, some in the afternoon, or you've got, you've got a set amount of time that you can do a remote shoot? Um, I mean, I'm I'm fairly flexible anyway. I'll always say, you know, with those that are based over on the uh, west side of the US, it's normally about eight hours behind, isn't it? Yeah. So I'll just say, well, how about, you know, it'll be like about, say, five, six o'clock in the evening in my time. Um, so for them, it's only like nine, ten o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, and that tends to work better for them shooting in the morning than the other way around. Because mm-hmm. if, they, if they've if they just come back from work, you're looking at five, six in the evening for them. Okay. But that will be like 2 a.m., 3 a.m. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, I don't really like the idea of shooting. I mean, I love it. But um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be shooting at two, three in in the yeah. morning. <laughs> yeah, you want to get sure. some sleep. Yeah. Oh, I'm fast asleep then. Yeah. yeah I'm out but of sound. Because you've got the lights up as well. I'm guessing that's freed you up from not having to rely on natural light because, like you say, it lets you shoot whenever you want to, but obviously not at two o'clock in the morning. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think now with the the uh, summer months approaching, it it's yeah. going to be better for those that want to do remote shoots from over the pond. I think for them, you know, if they want to shoot a little bit later in the morning, then that's that's going to be no problem shooting here sort of later on in the evening because it doesn't really go dark till nine, ten o'clock, does it? So yeah. it just means then I've got a bit more flexible time in the evenings to play with if they want to do natural light. Where do you think it's going to go from what you've seen so far mm-hmm. with all the remote shoots and um, all the various posts on social media and which way do you think it's going to go? Do you think uh, there's a market out there for it? Do you think it's going to take off or do you think it'll just die down eventually? I think it's, it's still going to be around because it's one of those things that it's, I believe, up in people's eyes to what you can do. Yeah. So especially that maybe travelling is not going to be on the agenda this year or maybe not until next year. Say for the, as an example, for maybe the Americans, they won't be able to travel this year to other countries. I definitely think it's um, like something, say, models can offer. So like like you say, if you go to a studio or you go to a location and you hire it out and you think, oh, OK, maybe I've got in-person shoots here, but I can add on a little bit, either at the beginning or end, depending on the time zone, if people yeah. want to shoot this location, because obviously they can't get to it, be it for medical reasons or travel reasons. That I, I think it's still something that a model could having her arsenal of what she can offer to photographers, be it locations, uh, tours, studio days, etc. It's just another thing that a model could offer. And I, yeah. I definitely think for what I've, I've definitely found out is like for photographers that have disabilities, so when they can't get to locations for whatever reason, that I've definitely had a few say to me like they love what remote photography is basically opened photography up for them again because right. it's yes. let them get to locations where it might be really hard for them to get to but because the camera's there and the model's there they've been yeah. able to get spectacular shots that they probably wouldn't think they could in their photography lifetime well that's that's positive isn't it yeah for them if that you know is going to work for many individuals more mm-hmm. this way than um it has you know, before, because I've shot with a, a couple of photographers that have disabilities, they're not able to get around without the aid of a wheelchair. Yeah. And, you know, at one point, oh gosh, I remember this was going back a couple of years ago now, um, perhaps a bit longer, but there was one, and bless him, he come down all the way from Newcastle, mm-hmm. and he was assisted right from when he left his front door on the train, and I think there was about three or four different train journeys down to Manchester this day, mm-hmm. And then he had to have assistance um, going from the train to a taxi, from the taxi to the studio. And, uh, you know, I mean, because there was no sort of disabled, you know, like a wheelchair ramp, it had to be lifted in. Mm. And I don't think a lot of studios have um, something that's suitable for disabled people, you know, disabled access. So it would be people, obviously, like themselves, you know, they're not physically Mm. able uh, for a whole variety of reasons that, you know, now this has been, um, remote shoots have been discovered and it's proven to work, they're going to obviously be quite happy just sitting from the comfort of their own home mm-hmm. without having to worry how they're going to get out and about. 
and still achieve the shots that they yeah. want by just instructing a model how to maneuver the lights around yeah. and you know where to position the camera it's it's exactly the same yeah. it may be a little bit more time consuming but that's fine if they're still getting the result they want surely that has to be worth exactly, a lot more yes. than yeah. you know than struggling and going out and about somewhere yeah. to, to do it. And I, I've seen some amazing work from some photographers with disabilities because, like I've said, it's literally, it's opened their eyes to photography again where they might think, oh, I can't do the studio day or they might have got to a studio day and it's just been like a really long day for them. Now yeah. it's literally, say, a model in New Zealand can say, yeah, I'm up a mountain, do you want to shoot that? And then they can go, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> so, like, literally some of the work I've seen from them is, is spectacular. <laughs> It's, it's yeah. sometimes even better than able to people that either shoot in person or remotely, and you just think, yeah, it's it's let them let their creative brain spring out and produce amazing pictures. Yeah, I mean, I can see why a lot of photographers don't. You know, I wouldn't say they they dislike it. I mm. think a lot of people feel that they don't want to take up remote shooting because. I mean, there's a number of factors that come into it, isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. it could just be that perhaps they just, it, it's different and it's the fear of the unknown, you know, doing yeah. something that's different. Another reason is that they'd rather just that face-to-face -face interaction. Mm -hmm. um, they get more out of engaging with that person uh, on a on a personal level. Yeah. Uh, they get more of a reaction, more of a response. It looks more natural, I suppose. And and obviously a bit more freer to keep manoeuvring around from one position to another. Mm -hmm. Whereas with remote shoots, you know, you have to shoot from that one angle, get all the all the sort of shots you want from that angle before you can move again. Yeah. And I can understand how for some, you know, remotes might not be for them because you don't quite get that. And then there's some that just don't feel that they can connect with it in any way at all. Mm -hmm. They just, I've had something say to me, I think it's absolute nonsense. Why would I want to do that when, you know, I might as well just wait it out and wait for, you know, wait till the day I can actually shoot with someone again, which is fine. Yeah. That's absolutely fine. But just going back to, you know, what we were saying about uh, photographers that might not be physically able, mm -hmm. you know, why put yourself through all that sort of, you know, exhausting themselves yeah. to the point that the shoot might not no longer be enjoyable when mm -hmm. you can you can just sit from the comfort of your own home and, and just, you know, and achieve the same thing. Yeah. Like I say, it may take longer, but it's it's so much more worth it than, you know, having your day ruined. But because yeah. this guy, this one I was just telling you about, mm -hmm. he was he was completely stressed at the end of the day. It, it just yeah. You know, you could tell he he enjoyed the shoot, but he was he was just buggered. Can I say yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can believe it out if if you can't. <laughs> okay, he was knackered. He was yeah. absolutely knackered at the end of the day. Bless him. I bet he couldn't wait yeah. to get home. It must have seemed like miles away with yeah. the time he, you know. Um, but there's a lot of photographers out there as well now because you know they've been financially set back. Everyone's yeah. been financially exactly. set back by this pandemic pandemonium. And it, uh, sorry, I can't get my words out. <laughs> Pandemic, like, not pandemonium. Yeah, pandemic pandemonium. <laughs> pandemonium, I was going to say. Yeah, so I think a lot of photographers have been totally set back financially, mm -hmm. as everyone else has. So they're not going to uh, be able to travel for a while. They're just not going to have the finances to travel. Mm -hmm. So I can see this continuing as it as it is um, at present for the duration of the year. But my mm -hmm. concern is all going well, you know, with variants and mm -hmm. you know if we see the cases die right down that we return to full normality mm -hmm. early next year my concern is that could we possibly see remote shoots starting to die down i don't think so because literally it's going to be like definitely the one area of photographers with disability but then it's literally going to be say people can't travel to the uk for one reason or another or a model can't travel to their country it's still going to be around i just don't think it will be as prevalent as it is now no i don't yeah i think that's the point i'm trying to get to i, yeah. I think I, I agree with you i think that is going to be the case I, I can actually see it only continuing between uh models of photographers who live at such a large distance mm -hmm. away that um even when it gets to the point that models or photographers don't you know are not able to financially you know if they're still financially set back perhaps yeah. or they just can't afford it anyway to travel that's where they're still going to benefit from it yeah. if they can offer something good like like it could be I, t I, t I tend to find what tends to sell the most is coming up with unique concepts but also mm -hmm. 
trying to find unique venues that perhaps those in the US don't have because yeah. we have uh, such a rich history here. You know, there's a location that I found like two weeks ago and um, it's just like this old sort of church like an old abbey mm-hmm. and I've had quite a few contact me saying oh wow that looks fantastic you know we're gonna have to shoot that sometime and now I'm actually thinking of just setting up a remote shoot there I think it's locations like that that you know when this when everything goes back to normal those are the kind of locations uh, that are going to sell remote shoots mm-hmm. um if they're to carry on it, it's always thinking outside the box all the time and offering something unique you know th- those kind of shoots but also again like you were saying uh, people that are just not able to yeah. travel in their own country because they're not physically able to i think it's like as as sad as it sounds it's like with photography a lot of people don't really take into account that there's photographers out there that obviously can't stand up for a long amount of time or in a wheelchair and now remote photography is sort of like i want to say push them into the limelight it's like given the opportunity to show their craft so do you find that um the pace has changed with remote shoots compared to one-to-ones for me it's a bit slower but i'm one of those photographers i'd probably take 20 30 shots and if i'm happy and the model is happy we move on to the next one where i know some photographers will shoot like hundreds or if not couple hundred shots of one outfit and then you've got to go look through all of those to find the best shots so as I keep saying it's quality over quantity yeah I mean each to their own I I don't I don't sort of knock anyone that likes to take 400 600 thousand shots in two hours it doesn't bother me that it's entirely up to them it's their Mm -hmm. shoot at the end of the day but I've always been a great believer in um, quality over quantity Mm -hmm. I think you know if I think those those particular kind of shoots come with um, actually discussing it in more detail, exactly what you want, yeah. have the setups ready, and all you've got to do then is just find the right exposure, throw a few poses in the bag, and that's mm. it, and then move on to the next one. And I think with you and me, I think that's what we pretty much did, wasn't it? You know, you, you're you very descriptive in um, being able to clearly put across exactly what you want. Yeah, I I, I, um, I don't like to micromanage. It's like if a model was presenting me with an idea, so say like you said, oh, I've got a python, do you want to shoot with a python? He's got yeah okay let's do that but then you sort of you it was like a blue hoodie type thing yeah you, you yeah. had and then you you had the, the python placed on top of your head and it was like okay we're treating this a bit like a fashion style shot so then that sort of got me in that frame of mind to shoot okay it's not more the pose it's more the attitude and making sure the python yeah. wasn't like slowly going down your neck and wrapping around your neck it yeah it's one of those ones it's like you take your time you, you get a couple of shots, we both looked at it, and then you think, I think you even said, oh, no, we could do better, and then we went back. You did a, a few different variations of it, and some of the yeah. shots after that came out better, which I'm totally for doing teamwork because obviously you know how, in ex- that example, the Python would act, where I might think, oh, it's moving a little bit, and you're going, no, it's fine, it's just settling. Yeah. So yeah. it's one of those things where sometimes the slower pace and you get less images, but then you've got more good choices to pick from after the shoot. Yeah, that's it. I mean, but with you, though, you kind of laid down the foundations, you know, with a few different ideas. And then I can just kind of bounce off that. Yeah. And then you just kind of improvise as you go along. So oh, maybe yeah. we can do this. Or maybe we can try this as well. And that's just a couple of other looks um, yeah. per set then, isn't it? Yeah. So you've already got, I think it's those that just don't quite know what they want to shoot. Mm. Um, and they're just like, well, what have you got? Oh, this is what I've got. Right, yeah, I'm happy with that. And then you're trying to think, well, right, okay, so what what can I present this photographer with? You know, mm. I've told them what sets I've got. Um, they've asked me what I might have in my wardrobe. Some can't really describe without having seen it first exactly yeah, but what that, they want. But that kind of eats and, into the time of the shoots, doesn't it? If the, if you're trying to stand there or send them pictures of the outfits you have, this should yeah. all have been done in, in pre-coms, <laughs> shouldn't it? Yeah. So I'll just kind of scan around when yeah. we get on the call. I'll just show them around. I'll just say, right, you tell mm. me which angles you want. I'm, you know, I'm happy just to keep maneuvering the camera to, you know, I'll just give them a, a quick sort of tour around the studio. Mm-hmm. So, so then I say to them, right, you can now imagine that you're stood in this room and it'll give you more of a clear idea as to, you know, where you could stand with the camera, like as if you were actually there. Um, and that generally, I find that generally tends to help. My uh, partner, Rob, who runs a professional company called uh, Animals UK, he provides uh, me with the reptiles for remote shoots. 
And some of those are also available to other models to uh, utilize also once things return back to normal. Uh, so for one-to-one sort of in-person shots. And I also just charge a small fee to make use of them on remote shoots as well. So thanks, Donna, for doing the podcast. Um, have you got any social media websites, platforms you want to promote? Uh, yeah, um, I come under Donna Rianne Lloyd on Facebook, or you can click like on my model page, which is Rihanna Gray Official. Um, and I also come under Rihanna Gray on Instagram. Cheers, Donna, for doing the podcast. And I look forward to seeing what uh, images photographers do with you remotely in the future. Oh, thank you. No, it's been great. Uh, this is my first podcast and I must say I really, I've really enjoyed it. We've had a good chat and yeah. it's just been good to, um, you know, have our different, uh, putting our different thoughts in about remotes and how we see remote shoots going forward. No, thank you for having me. No worries. And <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> okay, that wasn't planned. <coughs> <laughs> I tried to breathe yeah. and swallow at the same time. <coughs> okay. well, that's clever. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to ask a question and then I decided to breathe and it was like, okay, my body's <laughs> not liking that. I, um, okay, thanks for doing the podcast and um, look forward to seeing some more of the work photographers do with you remotely and I cocked that completely up so I'm going to say that again <laughs> go on right. I'll try not to oh, say it I'll so, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so now this is just going to go on for five minutes isn't it so... <laughs> sorry I'll shut up go on yeah. <laughs>